our call to worship this morning is Psalm 148. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Joyful and triumphant O come ye, O come ye To Bethlehem Come and behold him Born the King of angels O come let us Our scripture reading for the day comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. Luke 1, 11 through 20, and it reads, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias. For your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. 
and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not be able to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of his word. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are visiting our online worship service, we would love to know more about you. Please join our Facebook page at Mount Calvary Church Orangeburg and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mount Calvary Orangeburg. If you would like for us to contact you directly, please send your contact information to us by instant message or email us at mountcalvary3365 at yahoo.com. Today we celebrate the first day of the Advent season. Advent in modern times is about the expectation and preparation of the coming of our Lord Jesus's birth. But if you wish to know more about Advent, we do have Bible studies online that discuss it. Today, we will be blessed to hear a message from our own Reverend Dr. Adrian Johnson. The scriptures you may want to research on your own time are Psalm 148, Luke 17, 11 through 19, 1 Samuel 1, and for Advent, Isaiah 7.14. This first day of Advent is labeled Hope. As we continue our worship through giving, let's reflect upon a scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 11-12, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Now you should finish what you started. Let the eagerness you showed in the beginning be matched now by your giving. Give in proportion to what you have. Whatever you give is acceptable if you give it eagerly and give according to what you have, not what you don't have. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time of giving that you provide to us to not only serve others, but to serve you and to show forth our faith and our faithfulness. Lord, we ask you to bless the givers, bless those who desired to give, but had none to give, and bless our church, Mount Calvary Baptist Church, that we be good stewards over these resources, that you have given us charge over little, but you will soon give us charge over much. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I find space for what I treasure. I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities and Jesus, your So you don't feel that 
saints and friends. I pray and I trust that everyone under the sound of my voice had a restful and a peaceful Thanksgiving on this past Thursday. On this morning, it came to me that we still have reasons to be thankful. Although this was a different kind of year, But let me tell you, we still have reasons to be thankful. And so with that in mind, I want you to turn your attention along with me to Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. And it reads, And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. Answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? 
there are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Lord Father, I ask you again to remove Adrian out of this situation and let them hear you speaking through me. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. If I could just borrow your attention for just a few minutes this morning, I would like to use as my topic, I'm the one. I'm the one. The text opens with Jesus going to Jerusalem and he passes through Samaria and Galilee. Church, let me tell you, it's a good day when Jesus passes by. Souls can be saved when Jesus passes by. Bodies are healed when Jesus passes by. Bills get paid when Jesus passes by. Families come back together when Jesus passes by. Their minds are mended when Jesus passes by. You see, the text further stated that Jesus has entered into this certain city and he was met by some peculiar people. These people had leprosy. They stood afar off, and it had to be this way because in the Levitical law, if you were a leper, you couldn't mix and mingle with others, and not to mention, nobody wanted to be around them. Some of us can testify that I have been in a leper's position. I was so dirty on the inside that it began to show on the outside. But let me offer you some encouragement. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. It doesn't matter how rough the situation may seem. Everything will be all right when Jesus stops by. Now, can you imagine these men walking down the street and people looking at them and moving away from them because they didn't look good? They didn't look like your Sunday morning Christians, and Lord knows they didn't smell good. See, no one stopped and talked with lepers. People were afraid. Getting leprosy meant losing your work, becoming a social outcast and suffering a health condition that was miserable and eventually life-threatening. But the good news is that Jesus was coming to town, and the lepers get close enough to him to get Jesus' attention. Again, saints of God, I don't care what you're going through. Just get close enough to Jesus to grab his attention. You see, Jesus broke convention. He did talk with them. He took time, came close, and got involved with the least likely people. No one was beyond his compassion, his reach, and his care. That is still true. Nothing, re- nothing, really nothing about our lives repels Jesus. Even if everyone else shuns us, Jesus does not. We may think we are the least likely people Jesus would want, but the least likely are exactly those he does want. You see, Jesus cared especially for those whose diseases, disabilities, despair, and doubt left them feeling separated from God and their communities. Well, this raised a few points I want to offer on this morning. <clears throat> lift what you have left. Lift what you have left. See, verse 13 says, And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. See, you must understand the significance of this. When you have leprosy, the volume of your voices become weak and bodies are weak and warm. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been so down and out, so weak and warm, but you press your way anyhow? You didn't feel like going to church. You didn't feel like turning to your neighbors and saying good morning. You didn't feel like high-fiving three people. But if you, you, but you made up in your mind, come hell or high waters, in the words of my grandmother, if I could just muster up the strength, I'm going to press my way on. And once I got there, you see, I entered his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praises. I may be down and out, but thank God I'm here. COVID-19 may have caused me to get depressed sometimes, but thank God I woke up this morning. You got to lift what you have left. My second point, hope and healing are given to the least likely. You see, hope is a marvelous gift. Those who are struggling with life need to know there are better times ahead. 
to believe that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and they will emerge stronger and able to pick life up again. The sick, the heartbroken, those who are depressed, those who are lonely, they need hope. Hope is what God or what Jesus gave these lepers. He said, go and show yourselves to the priests. There is only one reason why they would do that. Because according again to ancient Levitical law, a priest could pronounce them clean. See, I can imagine them looking at each other and maybe at their own skin. The weeping sores, the wounds, all still there. But Jesus was saying, go and show yourselves to the priests. Those lepers surged with hope and off they went. And that is when the healing came. While they were on their way, everything changed. The sores healed. The wounds closed over. Their skin was made perfect. They looked good. And for the first time in the year, they felt strong, fit, and whole. As they went, they were cleansed. I want you to notice, the healing did not take place once they got to the priest. But the Bible says, while they were walking. You see, it's not about what happens when you get there. But it's about the journey you had to take. Sometimes the pains of life, the defeats, the knockdowns, the weariness, sap all your energy and optimism. We become imprisoned in our own disappointments. Nothing good will ever happen to me. So we decide and we give up believing our lives can be different. Not for us, you say. Can I let you in on a secret? One day I met Jesus. And my testimony became that everything that happens to me, that was good. God did it. I believe that was the testimony probably of these lepers as they realized that they were cleansed. So there is hope. My third point, gratitude comes from the one least likely. Gratitude comes from the one least likely. Among this group of lepers, some were Jews and you know, some were Samaritans. Jesus and some Jews and Samaritans would not normally be together, but the differences were secondary because they were all lepers. They needed each other to get by. And they overcame their natural dislike. As I studied a little deeper into this passage, I looked at verse 13. And verse 13 said, they. Hmm, that's plural. Verse 14 says, them. That's plural. Verse 15 says, them. Again, that's plural. But when you look at verse 16, it says he. That's singular. We're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Asked Jesus. Yes, ten were made well, but only one came back. And that one was a Samaritan. The one least likely was the only one to return. You see, Samaritans don't worship God. But my spiritual imagination can see that that one who came to God gave th God thanking God leaping and dancing all over the place. Some of us will probably sit in judgment and make remarks such as, it don't take all that. But when God has delivered you out of your mess, out of your darkness, when he has provided for you when you didn't know how you were going to make it, and you woke up this morning with the use of your limb. You look around and your family is doing well. Let me tell you, it takes all that and some. You see, if nobody wants to give God the thing he deserves, that's all right. <laughs> I'll be the one. If nobody can think of one thing to be grateful for, <laughs> that's all right. I'll be the one. Thank you, Lord, for saving a wretch like me. Thank you, Lord, for opening these blind eyes. Thank you, Lord, for loving me when I didn't love myself. You see, as I get ready to leave, I just want to share this with you. Sometimes I forget where I put my glasses. Sometimes while I, I'm in the house, I forget where I may have placed my cell phone or put my cell phone. And then I have to use my 
house phone to call my cell number. You know, sometimes I walk in the room and forget what I went in there for. Sometimes while shopping, I forget where I parked my car and I have to use my panic button just to locate it. But one thing I will not forget, Jesus, how you saved my soul. Jesus, how you made me whole. Jesus, how you picked me up and you turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. I won't forget how Jesus, you stayed on the cross. They nailed you to that cross. Just you stayed there and you suffered for a sinner like me. How they buried you in the barred tomb. But on that third day, how you got up with all power in your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done to me. I'm the one that's going to continue to give him praise. Whether I feel like it or not, I give him all the glory. And I give him all the praise. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. Just remember when you down and out. When Jesus passes by. You get close enough. Just to grab his attention. And, and when he bless you. Don't be like the other nine. You turn around. And you go back. And you thank God. For all he's done. For you. May God bless you. And heaven smiled upon you. Water, you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you I got it greater I got it stronger Lord you are higher than any other I got it healer Awesome and power Darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Praise God, praise God. We thank the Lord for Reverend Johnson and for that wonderful message. I'm the one.
letting us know that we need to lift what we have left to God. And that hope and healing are given to the least likely and gratitude comes from the one least likely. Lord, we thank you as we pray this morning for this wonderful word you have provided that we might marinate in it, that it might soak into our bones and that we might understand that we need to be that one who has the ability to lift what we have left to you. We are that one that gives us the gratitude to be able to thank you. We are the ones that have hope and healing given to us because we have opened ourselves to you. Lord, bless us and keep us as we continue through this season of Advent. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Henceforth now and forevermore, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us all say, Amen.